Well, it is amazing because we've got uh, the Sami Zayn Roman Reigns angle, which is super hot on SmackDown, and we have a Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns angle, which is super hot on Raw. Well, you know the thing tonight. Actually, we probably should have opened with this, but so the thing tonight. I mean, Holy smokes! It was fantastic. But the thing, the thing was, is is this was done because they were well aware of how hot the Sami Zayn thing is, and it was imperative to not have this WrestleMania main event angle uh, feel secondary. So they knew going in that they had to do something, and they did. And they just used you know, a lot of. A lot of real history there, um, you know, with uh, Dusty Rhodes and and Paul Heyman, you know, and they had a long relationship dating back to when um, <laughs> when Paul was very young and he was um, writing for and, and he had his own wrestling magazine, not newsletter, but magazine. And, um, you know, he would fly to different places. He would fly to Montreal to watch the Garvins and the Rougeos and things like that. And he flew to um, uh, the Carolinas uh, and Dusty was booking and um, he would just kind of go in the room before TVs and he was just in the room. And I mean, they were going to kick him out, but he just, they didn't kick him out, <laughs> you know, and he would watch Dusty. I think that they wanted to kick him out and he was just like, Oh, but Justy, you're such a genius. I just want to see how you, you know, like how you do this, what right? Worker. Oh, incredible worker, right? And you know, he's just putting Dusty over. I just want to watch and see your genius in action. And Dusty just, oh man, yeah, come on in. And so he would do that. And that is was how he studied being a booker in when he was like, goddamn, like 19, 20 years old, you know. Dusty Rhodes in the Carolinas. That was his. Uh, I mean, I mean, he learned from everyone. You know, that's the thing that Paul Paul learned from everyone. Don't get me wrong, but that was one of his big things. Was was, you know, being you know, I wouldn't say mentored by Dusty. Maybe he was, but but just doing that and kind of learning that aspect of the game. And um, you know, the Dusty and and Paul went back and forth. And and um, the only thing that surprised me in the promo was when they were talking about in two thousand and, and Dusty was broke at this point. Um, you know, the there's a story, and, and Cody's told the story before, but um, Cody had just gotten out of high school, and him and his sister wanted to go to um, Hollywood. I mean, his first thing was not to be a wrestler, a pro wrestler, although he, he was around pro wrestling from childhood. Um, you know, when, when Dusty did Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, Cody would referee and things, so he was around it, and he was a fan of it, but, but he... And Dusty also wanted him to be an actor because he was a good-looking guy. And so him and his sister went to um, – he didn't want to go and do college wrestling. I mean, he had a shot. He was had a Penn State scholarship or, or offer or something. But he, you know, after high school, he didn't – you know, he just was not into following up on the amateur wrestling. You know, he was a very good amateur wrestler. But then um, – he went to Hollywood, and Dusty was broke at the time, and Dusty sold his Rolex to finance him and his sisters going to Hollywood, but and you know, their acting lessons and things like that. So they did acting for a while. It's probably one of the, probably in the long run, I think Cody would, because of his, the acting coaching that he got, I think that's really helped him in the last five years, um, and, and more, but, but especially in the last five years. As far as being a character in wrestling and projecting and things like that, I think that's helped him a lot. So, um, but the, the 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 thing was, so Paul's going through the whole thing, you know, or or, or you know, um, Cody actually is that we were broke, and you know, you asked to uh, you asked Dusty to come to a show and do an angle with Steve Carino, and you would pay him and all this, and you know, you got Dusty's uh, confidence back up and all that. The thing that surprised me. Because it was 2000 is what they said is I was sure he was going to say like you promised to pay him and I thought he was going to say of course you never did and he didn't say that he said and you did you he actually, kept his word you kept his word which and means like, Dusty was one of the only guys paid in 2000 yeah but I mean the whole thing is is like you know I mean I remember ECW was was so short on money and Paul was you know I mean but I guess he respected Dusty enough or whatever he paid Dusty and then you know I mean. When Cody was starting out, Paul 
was, um, you know, Paul was pretty, I don't want to say close with him. I don't know the exact relationship, but, but he was definitely, Paul was definitely a guy that Cody went to when he was first starting out in wrestling, you know, for advice, as, as many people do. And, you know, really wanting to be, you know, what his father was, or he wanted to be a superstar really, really bad. He wanted John Cena, Sting, whatever it is, that was his goal. And, you know, obviously he had years and years and years of frustration. And, um, you know, and now he's going to main event WrestleMania, you know, which never would have happened if he never left. I mean, you know, he also had a, a line in there, Cody did, about how uh, uh, he goes, you know, before I came here, I was I was somewhere else causing some trouble. And and then he had a line about how, uh, you know, you uh, you made this work or something like that. He had some line about it. I, oh, 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 Paul's involvement in him coming back? I guess, yeah. Maybe, I guess Paul must have had something to do with it and just, you know. He did. Well. He did, yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, Paul's a smart guy. Paul's and it everywhere. made sense for Cody to make that move when he did. It was the best thing for his career. It was the best thing that ever happened for him for his yeah. career. And I knew it would be, but I didn't know it would be this good. I knew it would be when he did it because... WWE needed that jump because everybody was going in the other direction. And I didn't know if they would go all the way with him, but I did know that they were not going to pay him that kind of money. And he, when he came in with the goal of winning the title, the way he projected that goal from day one, it was like, he kind of has to win the title at some point. Now, did I, did I know it was going to be WrestleMania the next year? No. Um, but I do think that, you know, even then, I think the idea was he would win the Rumble and win the title pretty early on. And, you know, the pec injury um, actually made it better. You know, I mean, it's like very unfortunate injury. He had some momentum. But, um, you know, everything works out for him. You know, he's, I mean, it doesn't work out for everybody perfectly. But Cody's moves and his timing have all worked out. Because if he never left, and, and here's the thing, you know, if Dusty hadn't died... I, I Cody still may have left. I don't know if he would or he wouldn't. But that was what set it in motion is he's doing Stardust and then Dusty dies. Okay, while well, he's doing the Stardust character. And the Stardust character was a nothing happening, going nowhere, you know, whatever. His father dies. Now there's all the sympathy. He needs to turn baby face. And they just have him do the Stardust character, which was freaking. I mean, I, I just remember when it was going on. I was like, this is stupid. This is so stupid, keeping him in the character. I did not know at the time that, you know, he was publicly going like, oh, no, I have to finish what I started. I mean, he was actually defending them at the time. And it was just like, no, this is stupid, you know, doing this. You're, the, the people want to cheer you now. They don't want you to be a gimmick now. I mean, you know, it's like it's everything changed when your father died. But, you know, he did that. And eventually he got so frustrated with, with them not taking the gimmick from him that he quit and he was just going to go to the Indies and end up in ring of honor. But if he had stayed there, he was just going to be a career mid Carter. That's the reality. He'd have never, I don't say never cause you, you never know, but I would not expect it. But when he went there and he went to AEW and became a star and was the first star to jump from AEW to WWE and kind of a flagship guy, it was like he came in and I mean, you know, it was just, he got that great, great, great reaction at mania and uh yeah it's all been successful and you know the other thing too is is that you know we talk about you know nobody's a draw blah 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 it's the brand that draw draws well he's a draw you know sammy's a draw too you know obviously these smackdown ratings but cody is a draw this weekend um they had house shows in columbus georgia and pensacola and they were you know the advances were you know the same you know, 2,000, 2,500 um, that they do everywhere else. In fact, it was lower than usual. They had, the advances were not good. I mean, they were, they weren't, I'm not saying, they, they weren't bad. They were, okay. they were normal house show advances or maybe a little bit lower than a normal house show advance. Cody wins the Rumble. Then they announce, you know, that Cody's working those two shows. And they did, um, they did the all-time record gates in both cities in Columbus, Georgia, and in um, Pensacola, Florida. 
you know, about 6,000 people in both in both shows, a little under six. But but for house shows, I mean, like last year, you could count on probably one hand, you know, except for like the gar- a garden house show or, you know, there's the garden. And I think, you know, some of the Canadian ones were big and there's there was a big one in Sacramento that Roman Reigns worked on. You know, it was like six, seven thousand, some, something like that. But I mean, WWE house shows don't usually draw like that. So he's a mover, at least right now. And, um, you know, WrestleMania is going to be big, you know, um, but so, yeah, that's the, you know, it, it's in his merch. Remember the merch, the merchant San Antonio, he was the number one merch seller over Rumble weekend. So, you know, I mean, like uh, he's he's a legit star right now. I mean, you know, he's been a legit star for years, but he's at a different level of star now than he's ever been. Then we had a Cody segment, which was just awesome. You know, Cody acknowledges yeah, it's Sammy. One of the, was, it's one of the, one of the best uh, segments that they've done yeah. in, in a long, long, long time. Fantastic stuff. Both of them. Both of them were. But is this, you know, when this one was over, it's kind of like, you know, after. Like, I don't know that, that Paul should be the person in charge of creative. I don't know that he shouldn't either. But the one thing I did know from after the segment, and just, and, and again, from the Sami Zayn segments as well because he's a big, big part of this stuff, him and Roman Reigns both, is that, um, man, when it comes to aspects of creative, the guy, is he's still got it. I mean, he can he can put together angles um, better than maybe anyone in the world. I mean, his ability to put together angles is, is you know, um, verbiage and, and creative ideas and everything like that. It's It's unparalleled. You know, I don't know about like booking, you know, when he booked Raw. I can't judge by when he booked Raw. I can't because it was like. Because he didn't really book Raw. Because every every week Vince would change everything. So you can't build any momentum. And, and the guys, look, he wanted to make uh, Malachi Black into this superstar that would main event WrestleMania. And Vince just wanted to beat the guy. He wanted to make Ricochet into you know, a big superstar. And Vince just wanted to beat the guy. So you can't really, like, his booking of Raw. Certainly was not successful in the ratings when he did it, um, but I don't know that that was a, a thing that says, you know, like, I don't know if he was, if in the long run he would have been a good or a bad booker because I just didn't, you know, it wasn't a fair shake to know. But I do know from watching how, you know, this, all the Roman Reigns stuff and the Lesnar stuff and everything like that, that when it comes to um, laying out and putting together angles... This guy is unparalleled in this business. Well, he uh, he comes out there. First, Cody comes out. It was interesting because Cody starts out by saying, I know what you guys are all thinking, and uh, I'm wishing the best of Sami Zayn, and I hope that at WrestleMania I am fighting for the championship against well, Sami he, Zayn. He, Cody had to, he had to do that because he doesn't want to be, number one, it's very important to the entire company that, the Cody match is not the secondary match because, you know, it's at WrestleMania. But it's also important that people don't look at it like a competition between the two of them and then the people get behind Sami Zayn and then that screws up Cody as a babyface. So he really had to address it in that way. Well, the interesting thing was the the promo opens with him saying that, uh, you know, I think Sami's going to beat Roman Reigns and I think we're going to face off for these titles at WrestleMania. And by the end of this promo with Heyman, I mean, he make, he's making it abundantly clear. I'm going to WrestleMania. I am taking those belts from Roman Reigns. And nobody booed by the end of this because they went back and forth about history that we talked about earlier. And Paul's in tears and Cody's fighting back tears. And the big line at the end is that he says, you know, Cody, the last conversation I ever had with your father... He told me that you were his favorite son. And Cody's kind of taken aback, and, and Paul says, but he also told me Roman Reigns was the son he'd always wanted. And the crowd goes, aha! Because mm. he'd been so nice to Cody, and they talked about their history, and they'd put each other over and shaken each other's hands, and... And then Paul has to pull that one out. And now Cody's furious and he gets in his face and he wants a handshake and Paul's scared to death and Cody grabs his hand and he says, I was just trying to win a wrestling championship. Everybody's trying to make it personal. And that line you just said right there, 
You've made this whole thing personal. And you're not the one who's going to pay for it. Roman is the one who's going to pay for it when I take both of his titles at WrestleMania. And the crowd went nuts for that. So I mean, uh, the key, the key it this, worked. The key to this is they are not doing, at least creating a new championship on the, on the Saturday night show. They're not creating a new championship? Yeah, they were, so you, they're talking about the, 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 doing the second title on Saturday night. I'd always been under the impression Roman was defending both titles. No, if if it was Roman and The Rock, they were going to create a championship on Saturday night that Cody probably would have ended up winning. Sure. Yeah, but but it was Cody Drew or Rollins was going to come out of, out of that one. And, um, you know, they were creating a second, you know, because they want to go back to two titles, you know, just like they want to do for the... Um, <laughs> but they're trapped? Well, they don't want to do they they don't want to do it. I mean, obviously at WrestleMania it's for both belts, which they did explain again. They did say it's now two belts again. It's it you know, it wasn't it's not one belt now. It's back to two belts. So they are at some point going to separate them. Poor Steffi, every time she comes out she gets Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring and he was oh, going to give gonna her It's going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we've got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> What a crummy show. Oh. Wow. What do you want me to do about it? What the? <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.